It is the winter of the first year uh, of Shogun, and it's going to be Junior's turn uh, in the spring uh, for us to focus on him, which is kind of fitting because he's going to be the first person uh, who we resolve during the winter. So we'll, we'll do the winter and scoring and all that, um, go through all the people, and then you know I'll kind of review where I think everyone, how everyone's doing. Uh, for those of you who don't know the game and can't just figure that out by looking at the board. Um, and then we'll go on to Junior Spring, uh, if there's time. I think there will be. Um, but anyway, it's it's good for Junior, I think, that he gets to go first, because there aren't going to be as... there haven't been a lot of farmer cubes thrown into the tower. Uh, what's going to happen is pretty much everyone's going to experience some sort of revolt. Um, and those revolts are going to involve the farmers and it's going to be a lot of trouble and a lot of battling because I don't think anyone has enough rice. So first thing we got to do is we got to take four rice off of everyone's marker here. So Destructo who's at six, he's going to go down to two. Pinky and Junior are going to go down to four. Betty Crocker is going down to five. And Sunny, who's in the best position, is going to go down to seven. So if you count up Junior here has one, two, three, four, five, six provinces. He doesn't have enough rice for two of his provinces. So I think there's going to be two random revolts, I believe, is how that works. I'm going to have to draw that, uh, shuffle that, because I need uh, shut off the camera because I need my hands. So Junior is uh, two rice short for two provinces. So we go to this table here. It he's going to have to take on farmers in only one of his provinces. So I shuffled it up while the camera was off and we'll draw this one, Harima. So Harima is good for him in that he um, doesn't have any revolt markers that would add to the farmers that go in there. Bad because he only has one cube. Um, so let's resolve that. Here we go. And he managed to keep Harima. And I think it really helped that he was the first player. So Pinky, as you might recall from the rice um, track, was in the same place as Junior. However, she has more provinces, so she's going to have to draw two different provinces and have to deal with both of those. So I shuffled it up. Let's see. In Setsu and in Omi. So let's take a look at where those are. Setsu is... That's Isa. Omi's right here. That's going to be trouble for her. Luckily, you know, there still aren't a lot of farmers in the tower, and she's going to have four cubes to deal with the two farmers that she's going to place in. Um, Setsu is... gosh, I don't even know where Setsu is. I'll figure that out. Right, here's Setsu. Setsu, she's probably definitely going to lose. She has three different um, revolt markers, so she's going to be going one against five there. I think she's going to choose to go with... Omi first, try that and see how that goes. She managed to retain Omi. A lot of farmers came out of the tray though, so she's only got, she only has two left. She's gonna be putting five in now with the one that was in uh, Setsu. Let's drop them down. And as I suspected, but not by very much, she did lose Setsu. She was she was pretty mean to Setsu. She, she really, farmer, um, I think these all go away. And Destructo's in a similar position in terms of the number of revolts he's going to have to contend with. Um, he has four provinces that he is not able to feed with his paltry two bowls of rice. Uh, so he's going to have to draw two. Luckily, three and four are the same result. So that's he's not going to get a stiffer penalty than Pinky. Uh, Kozuki. Right there, that's not bad for him. Um, so that's kind of his muscle man. He doesn't want to really lose a lot of cubes there since it's adjacent to Musashi, which is Sunny's muscle man. Uh, and Totomi. Totomi is... Hmm. Oh, Totomi he already lost. I forgot to get rid of that. So that's gonna... we'll draw another one. Mutsu. Mutsu is up here. Alright, I think he's going to... He's gonna go for Mutsu first and then... Uh, Kozuki, and I'm not going to make you watch me drop cubes for that. Kozuki got hammered. Matsu did okay. He went with Kozuki second. Three armies left. Destructo, I don't know if I'm... If Destructo continues to do this horribly, I don't know if I'm going to continue the game into three years since we're playing for one um, elimination. Maybe this type of game isn't a good game for to play 
for elimination you want to play to find the winner rather than the loser. <laughs> um, but I don't know, maybe he can come back. We'll see how the next year goes. Um, if he's completely far behind on the scoring track, and I guess we haven't scored yet, um, we can make a determination at that point at the end of year two. Sonny's only one rice short. He has a lot of provinces and a lot of rice compared to the other people. Um, so he only has to draw one, and they're only going to take a one. Only one farmer is really going to be bothered by it. Shimosa. Shimosa is right here. That shouldn't be too too hard for him. It'll be a six on two. And Destructive did get rid of quite a lot of green cubes. Kind of sad for him. He had a lot of blue cubes in there, but I think he lost a lot of those just getting dealing with his farmer problems. And there were still some farmers in there. Uh, Sonny got, got hurt in Shimosa. I don't know that that's going to really play an effect on any... Although I guess Shimoku, Shimosa is a, a jam. Finally, Betty Crocker is three rice bowls short, so he's got to he's got to draw two. Key, that's right here. That's a dangerous one for him. He's going to be three on three in the cube tower for that. And Bichu, that's his his capital. Ooh, that's rough. Um, I mean, he should be able to take them down, but he's surrounded there. That could be the opening Junior wants. All right, and the Shogun's op opting to resolve Bichu's revolt first. And those were the two that he dropped in. Both came out. And now the key province here. And he held it. Wow. That is lucky for him. That means there's some farmers still floating around in the tower. And here are our scores. Pinky has the lead with 16 and Sunny uh, with 15. They're kind of neck and neck. Shogun is just behind them with 13. Then way back, Junior has 8. And then finally, Destructo has six. So let's talk about, and so I can think about a little bit, what exactly is happening here, why certain people are doing better than others. Um, first off, I think, you know, the extremes are interesting to look at in a game like this. So our extremes in this case are Destructo and then um, Destructo and Junior, I guess, on one end, especially Destructo. And on the other end, we have uh, Pinky and Sunny. So what are they doing differently? One thing they're doing differently, I think, that, that's kind of glaring and obvious, is that Destructo especially, and we'll just talk about him, I guess, in this case, is thinking of it as a military game, as, as it's about conquest and fighting. And it's Shogun really, you know, most only only two out of your 12 actions, potential actions, two out of your potential 10 actions on a turn are actually um, combative, and that weakens you at the same time. So combat does play a role in this game. It's You're, you're going to score more by with the buildings, and that's what we're seeing with Pinky. But then again, it also depends on what people are competing in. So Pinky was able to walk away with more building points than the other players, partially because she's focused solely on that, and the other people did get um, in, in, in these combats. Um, Junior, I think he was a victim of placement. I think because he ended up near the Shogun's starting place, he kind of, you know, uh, that was one of his first province picks, I think, and then his following ones were also around the Shogun's uh, Bishu. He ended up getting tied up in trying to take Bichu. He kind of had this goal in mind that he wanted to go for. And it might cost him the game. He's actually, you know, he's got a lot more cubes on the board, I think, than, um, than Destructo. But point-wise, he's not that far ahead of him. And, you know, they're both smart individuals. We'll see, see what happens with that. Sonny, he did do some conflict, but he was a lot more defensive. And his opponent was Destructo, who was weaker. Uh, more divided. Um, Sunny was concentrated in one place. Destructo wasn't. Sunny was able to do some building. Was more careful with his money. You know, there's a lot of reasons. Sunny, and and there was also some luck involved. I think Destructo had some bad cube drops. Um, our Shogun's kind of in the middle of the pack. It's harder to talk about things that are in the middle. Um, I will say, however, he had some significant advantages, and he hasn't really been able to make use of those, as evidenced by the fact that he's in the middle. You'd think he would be, be doing much better than the other people. I think a lot of that depends on the placement. I think that placement is pretty important. Um, and, you know, he he kind of felt he had to defend Bichu, which was 
has been useful. I mean, that's three points at least. So you got four points, five points total af off of keeping Bichu. So that's, you know, about clo getting close. It's like between a half and a third of his points. So that's pretty good for him. Let's talk about Junior now, though, because it's going to be the spring of Junior. Junior spring. I want you to take a look at Junior's face here. He has one of the more interesting expressions, I think, um, it, uh, on, in terms of the real people. So we, we've already looked at Destructo, uh, kind of a smile. There's something behind the eyes, I think. Um, you know, we have Pinky here, kind of a standard smile. Maybe looks a little tired. Um, or Betty Crocker. I'm falling, I'm falling. I've recovered my balance. Betty Crocker here, he's got a very uh, silly smile. Um, you know, we can talk about that later. But Junior, he doesn't have a big smile. He has, uh, he has that squint. There's a lot of reasons uh, he could be squinting like that. Um, he's got, got a, a confidence on his face. Um, at least some, see some confidence there. But the fact that he's squinting, I think, is, is one of the more interesting things. Like, why would... Kind of like this. This is maybe a little bit more of a smile than what I'm doing, but... Um, and I, th I think maybe partly what you see on his face could be revealed by his pet peeve, which is photographers. He has this adversarial relationship with the person who is taking the picture. Um, and I don't know why that is or whether he uses that in other things. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but one of the, the pulls on Junior that make him an uh, interesting character to me is that he both... He both, he has this motto, live and let live, which kind of is like, you know, leave people alone, which would prescribe a certain style of play, right? But then he also wants to be a fighter pilot, which is very an aggressive thing. You don't, you don't fly a jet and shoot people if you're, if you want them to live and let them live. Um, the nickname says something, he's junior. That means, I, I'm assuming he's, you know, his real name is so-and-so, his father's name with Junior added. So, I, names can't, I think names in a way, how you, the name you think of yourself as does affect you in a certain way. I don't think it's like, it's going to pres prescribe your whole life, but I think it definitely, um, you know, the, the words we use for things have a certain power. So if you think of yourself as this, this your father, Junior, there's going to be, a, that's, your, your father is going to color you in a certain way. It's going to, to paint the way you, you think about yourself and your life. And, you know, people oftentimes have interesting relationships with their, their parents anyway. So to be named Junior, I can't, I can't imagine what that's got to be like. Um, systems analysts, I don't know what they do, but systems analysis seems like it ties into games a lot. So it seems like he should be doing a little bit better than he is. I think, um... Maybe this is my fault. I, I kind of fixated, he fixated on the fighter pilot aspect. Um, and I think also certain traits come out depending on certain situations. And since he was like surrounding the capital, um, it maybe made sense at the time for him to be a fighter pilot. Now that the scores have come out though, it might make more sense for him to be a bit more of the, his systems an, an analyst to come out a little more. Um, he's proud of his job. He's proud of being a systems analyst. So but he, his fantasy is to be something else. That's another interesting push and pull, or pull. You know, you're proud of what you are, but you want to be something completely different. I, again, I don't know what systems an, a, analysts do, but I think it's a very different um, set of skills than those of a, a fighter pilot. Fighter pilots seem like they're very directed, and they're going towards something very quickly, and they're all, like, in the moment, acting. Where the systems analyst analysis implies to me, like you're spending some time on that. You're you're spending some time, and you're taking time to kind of see where all the strings lead. Um, and so they seem very different. Uh, systems analyst seems less direct, and he likes music. I I don't know anyone who doesn't love music in some respect or who wouldn't say that you know that i think music's around us we're, we're birds um three words to describe them honest humorous curious curious is always fun i think uh humorous that's that's 
Well, no, I think humorous can come out in play. I think um, it, if you're humorous, you maybe don't, you're, you're less married to the goal of the game uh, sometimes than if you're a, a more serious person. Because if you, humor, one thing about humor is you're, you're more, if you're humorous, you're more prone to uh, deciding your own goal and your own rules in the interaction. Whereas um, if you're serious, you go by the book about what's, what the goal is. So that, that might inform a little bit why he played the way he did. He made the story about him um, invading the capital Bichu rather than him getting points, which, you know, I, I dig playing with people like that. Um, and speaking of playing with people like this, let's play with people like this. Now it's Junior Spring. Something I, I'm not sure I was aware of that I just thought I'd mention because it might be something you missed in the rule book too. You remove all the revolt markers between years. Just read that. Um, so clean slate for everyone, which is nice. Tax away, people. All right, so I have no idea what this means. Um, we have two different, I'm looking at the events, the special events chart, and there's two different cards. One that says maximum five, one that says minimum six, but it seems like they do the same but just the same thing but have different numbers. Now how I would read it is the maximum number of chests you would get in the five scenario is five, even if you played like a, a, a province that you could tax seven from, and the reverse being true for the other one, the, the least amount you could get is six. So I would, I would probably play it since these tend to be restrictions um, that if you played something that was lower than six, that you just wouldn't count it. And I think that's how I'm going to do it, because I feel like there's got to be a typo here somewhere. Um, anyway, we have our our uh, our special events that are possible for this year. They're all going to happen in one way or another. Interesting is this. This could make um, the rice quite nice if it doesn't come up until winter time. This one makes it so that um, neutral provinces have two farmers rather than one. There's still a lot of neutral provinces out there. Um, people weren't very expansive. Um, but we have all these minimums and maximums going on. I wonder how shuffle the event deck is, but I, I doubt I would ever sort them by minimum maximum. So I think that's just how it, how it came out. Um, so that could be interesting. You know, we could, uh, the, the way people gather their resources, they're really going to have to pay attention to that. And I'm trying to remember when it comes in the, the turn order. Yeah, the events are actually after they play their plan their actions. So that they're always going to have to be thinking about these numbers when they pick what, what um, provinces they collect rice from and which provinces they tax from. Time has come for Junior to analyze this system and figure out what would be the best choices for him right now at this given time. The spring of Junior is a gentle spring. It's beginning this year uh, with some very gentle activities. There aren't any attacks or even, well, I guess there's some troop buildups, but there's, you know, the taxation is well in the open. You know when the rice is coming, all the heavy construction and the fights are all in the blind portion of the action track. Um, special actions, there they are. Now let's take a look at what he's going to be going for. So the events are going to kind of define things. Uh, you don't want... So with these two in the mix, the way these two interact, um, if you have anything, the most... If this one comes up, the most you're going to get is five. If this one comes up, you have to have something six or higher. So that put six at kind of the 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 best the best card to tax from right um, so he's gonna tax hokey which is right up here um, and then rice wise you have this maximum three so it'd be sad to to play something that was bigger than three and only get three so he will get rice from his choices are Izumo and Mimisaka I think he'll go with Izumo he doesn't want to be without rice this time around because he saw how that can really hurt you. Um, so that leaves him with these four provinces to work with. Now he has Bichu here, still with quite a lot. He could keep he could keep banging his head on that on Bichu, 
and I think he wants to keep that option open. However, there are a couple of other things he would like to do, namely expand outward from where he is. Uh, there's only really two points he can do that at right now. He could head south into Yo, um, take some of Pinky's territory. That's going to lead him up against this block of Betty Crocker again, but he would get a temple out of it, which could could potentially give him a point. Um, also, his other point of, um, I guess, exploration or exodus or uh, expansion, expansion, that's the word I'm looking for, is Harima. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any cubes in Harima, so he'd like to be able to um, get Harima some cubes. So I think that's going to tell us that he wants to recruit in Harima. He really doesn't need to recruit anywhere else uh, unless he just wants to keep up this arms race, but that doesn't seem like it's going to be too effective in the long run. Then where does what does he want to where does he want to do his attacks from? Does he want to do attacks uh, building up? He could build build buildings and win in that in that way too, but he hasn't given up on Bichu. If he takes Bichu then he doesn't have to build. So um, I think what he's gonna try to do is he's gonna try to choose provinces to attack from that would give him choices. So that's gonna make Mimisaka one of them because if Mimisaka comes up he can either uh, move some cubes into Harima, which would help him expand outward in the future, or um, he can always attack Bichu with it if he, if he chooses to do that, depending on what Betty Crocker does and how things look at that point. Um, so his other two choices are Bingo and Bizen. Bizen's right here. Uh, he could do a similar thing, but then he'd have these two small groups. Um, I think he's going to go with Bingo as his second attack, because that's going to give him Again, either he can attack Bichu, or he can go down to Yo, or he could, you know, attack Destructo if he wanted to. Not sure that would be that useful to him, other than just kind of clearing off this area. Um, still some easy points. So what can he do with Bizen here? Bizen is not a lot of cubes there. He has the Shogun's forces right here. It's in between some Shogun guys. Um... Hmm, what to do with it? It's not a super safe place to build. He has better provinces which he could build, and there's only one thing he could build there. And he's not sure he even wants to compete via building, um, if he's still hoping to take Bichu. So we'll rule out building. Um, let's, let's have him... Money-wise, he's doing all right. So let's have him do the big recruit there. He's tempted to do the mobilizing recruit so he can move to Harima, but he doesn't want to leave it that week. So he's going to do his medium-sized recruit. And then is he interested in these special events up north? Um, none of them seem particularly great to him. He doesn't even know if his attacks are going to be against anyone. They might be mobilizing attacks, so that doesn't end. Plus it's fifth in the turn order. This isn't always that bad. I think he's kind of agnostic about these. I don't think he really cares which one he gets. He doesn't feel like the defense one doesn't seem that attractive. Doesn't feel like he's going to get under attack, except maybe from Tajima. Um, money's nice. He's doing fine in money. Rice, maybe. Maybe he wants to get these first two. Um, rice or recruitment. Maybe he'll play one, since he's not really he's not really spending that much money otherwise. All right, and Junior ended up with the bid. No one else bid really anything. Junior's actually doing better on money than the other people right now, so that kind of makes some sense. He went with the, the he thought a bit between um, the big recruitment and the rice. He went with the, the big recruitment, partially I think because it was first. He, you know, the fighter pilot in him wants to go first. And plus, you know, that recruitment, Harima could be his best chance of success if he never takes Bichu because it's really his window into the rest of the world. And there's some nice buildings over here that he could potentially take. So that's where he went. Um, the Shogun, he got second bid with this Bichu here. That's his capital. So he's declared to everyone that he's not doing anything with Bichu this turn. Um, what he gets out of that is he gets to decide he gets the next bid. I forgot to mention, uh, or I actually forgot to draw the event for the, the, the turn. It's maximum five treasure. That's actually nice that that came out because that's going to give people a little more certainty in their choices uh, for future seasons. 
Um, but sad thing about it is it's the it's the minus zero rice penalty one. It's the one that would have they would have had to worry less about rice. So white rice is still going to be a worry. All right, and the A and B attacks have been revealed. Um, they're right side by side there. And so we're going to start with Junior's attack in Mimasaka, and he has decided to go the, the way of the fighter pilot again and attack Bichu um, here. It's just a, it's a really nice prize if he takes Bichu. And for once, the Shogun doesn't have any sort of defensive bonus other than just having <laughs> a lot more cubes. So let's do it. Mimasaka. And looks like Shogun won. It was sort of a softening move, so I don't think Junior Junior didn't not expect that. Oh, the farmer fights on his side though. So there's only four left in Mimasaka. And this could be Junior's chance. Several things happened during that attack round, but we're focusing on Junior. So now it's attack phase B. Bingo against Bichu. This is the the big one for Junior. It potentially is. This has been what he's wasted a lot of activity on through most of the game. We'll see if it's a waste. There are now th three black cubes in this tray, so that's going to make it deceptively harder than it otherwise would be. Whew. So here we go. Is he pouring good money after bad, or is he being steadfast and seeing it through to success? What would have? Let's see. Dun dun. Dun dun. Dun dun. Oh, the farmer's helping. Dun dun. Dun dun. Dun dun. Oh, it's a tie! That's huge. If it weren't for that farmer, it wouldn't be a tie. So what happens here is the prize is just destroyed. The, pa the palace and the temple are gone. And there's just a big hole in the heart of the land where Bichu once was. Bichu's last act was to be a bidding chip. And that's how things end for Bichu. All right, and that is going to do it for Junior Spring. Let's just take a quick overview on some of the big changes that happened um, in the, the area, and then we'll wrap up. I'm actually running out of time here quickly. i got to go back to work. So uh, first, let's look at Sunny. Sunny is spreading big time. He failed to take Kozuki from Musashi, though. Um, he did take Totomi, so he's expanded. He built a palace. He's looking good. Um, you know, and if you look up north here, Destructo's really thinned himself out. He he pretty much just exists in Kazusa in the east and very has very little in other places. The thing about this game, though, since you do have to um, devote an action to an attack, being thin like that doesn't mean you're going to get taken, you know? For example, both of these provinces could get taken, sure, but if, if uh, Sunny spends his time doing that, then he's not going to be dealing with these other areas, and he can only do two attacks a season. So, Destructo is not in the worst place in the world. I still think he's not doing that great, though. And he's also bottled in here. Now, this next turn might be his chance to move out of there, um, because here we have, finally, there's not this huge yellow wall right there, and he's built up enough forces. He successfully resisted attack from EO, actually, as well. Um, I, he did. He's deposited so many blue cubes in there that sometimes they come out and really help him. Um, you know, the, the empty spot beats you. No longer looks attractive. Um, so kind of bittersweet for Junior. I think there is some sweetness to it, though. He, you know, he can take that, take beat you pretty much without, you know, uh, very easily, and then focus on something else. So maybe the fact that it fell is a good thing. You know, and he can he can build back up if he wants, and then he's going to have a majority of this area, so he's free to build without a lot of competition. Um, he's actually going to have to start work, worrying about Destructo, and there's still the Shogun is still speckled around up the, or around him there, and he's going to have to deal with that. Uh, interesting how that came out. Definitely, he would have liked to take the palace that was not to be. Um, over here, now I want to point this out, the Shogun seems to have kind of popped up 
in Pinky's neck of the woods, which makes a lot of sense. And the other guys are coming towards her as well. She's built a lot there. Um, and those those buildings look attractive. Unless there's a dead tie, they stay there when they get taken over. Um, so that's, that's what she's looking at. If she can hold on, though, if she can hold on to all that stuff, she's still going to be pulling in a lot of points, especially since... There wasn't a lot of building this turn. You can look at the actions that people have done. Junior, no building. Uh, Sunny built a palace. You know, Destructo, no building. The Shogun built a temple. You know, not a lot of building at all. So she's still kind of the building leader. Of course, that can change in the summer and the fall, but, you know, it's going to be, you know, to try to take the most palaces, for example. If you want to have the most, you're going to have to spend six treasure chests, and she could always build another one and me no, perchance. Um, expect to see some building up north here, though. There's no competition on that, so if you build a building, you automatically have the most, unless someone else has the same idea, so that could be interesting. Another interesting thing is not a lot of money got pulled in this season due to this maximum five, so that's going to really limit people um, next year, the uh, or next next season in the summer. Shogun, he had the most money to start the game. He's down to three now. Uh, that's going to be rough for him. So Junior got to play fighter pilot. He got to have his dramatic attack, and it actually worked. You know, it wasn't the, the sort of way that you would expect a, a fighter pilot. Well, maybe. I guess I don't know enough about military to really speak to that. Uh, I'm, I think of fighter pilots as, you know, you do something and it's fast and then it's done and you don't have to go back. What he ended up doing was a long siege. But I guess sieges nowadays oftentimes have a lot of airstrikes. Um, so repeated airstrikes. So maybe he was his, his systems analysis blended with the fighter pilot side of him to make um, someone who analyzed and ordered a bunch of fighter pilots to um, to go in cube-like succession over Bichu, destroy the city. So now he has, he has nothing to really get from it except that he's done and I think now maybe some other some other he can focus on some other areas. He has to find a new narrative to drive his activities and that's going to be interesting to see what Junior comes up with next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament Shogun.